Good afternoon. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. Um, my name is James McKay, co-host for the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. Normally hosted by Matt and Justine, and they're still off surfing and having a great time. So they'll be very relaxed and back for next week. So today we are talking about aquaponics for food security in the right, right way. So um, I personally had an interesting experience in the first exposure to aquaponics in Hawaii. This uh, background is kind of appropriate, and the production crew didn't know this, but I'm a retired, no, semi-retired solar energy developer. So I, I uh, was building a lot of the solar farms out in Waianae, West Oahu, and kind of was really struggling myself with how we develop solar in the right way for Hawaii. And I don't believe that the solar farm is being done where it's a single-use entity is a good way forward for Hawaii. So I looked at looking at raised solar farms and putting stuff underneath them. And one of the things that popped up that's very in line with Hawaiian values is aquaponics. Because it uses fish to fertilize the food. And I have the pleasure and honor to, with me today, Jason Brand from Kunia Country Farms. And with him is John Young from the executive director of the Hawaii Asphalt Paving Industry. Yes. And eclectic couple of uh, pairs in uh, titles. We'll get to the uh, reasons why we're sitting here together today. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you for coming down to the studio, fighting the traffic and noise, good times on an afternoon. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Yeah, yeah. pleasure. So, and, um, so you guys, asphalt, aquaponics. Yes. Interesting mix. Yes. What have we got going on here? They do mix. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously you need the, uh, a good solid base for the aquaponics beds. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to kind of focus on the relationship between you two, what you guys have worked on together, rather than the technology of aquaponics. I think uh, Jason's been in it a long time, I believe it's nearly six, six, years. six years now, yeah? yeah. So a um, bit of history, Jay, you were on the show, I believe, Jay Fidel's first ever ag tech series, which yeah. was back in May of 2014. That's right. So, so yeah, it's been a long time this has been in the making, and it's awesome to see you still in business and only getting to bigger, better things. Um, John, you've been involved in mainly building our roads around Hawaii and all yes. sorts of paved infrastructure. Yes. And as an engineer, you uh, heard Jason on the radio. He, he loves to self-promote, but obviously for the best reasons, right? <laughs> well, yes. Um, so tell us the story. How did you guys end up meeting and how is the asphalt industry well, merging with the aquaponics it's, industry? It's not, it's not, that's not exactly how we met. I, I was channel surfing and I saw uh, on Kamaina Business, I saw this uh, banker that turned into a farmer and then when I saw the farm it was just amazing that they they just um, filled their tanks with water once the water you know goes around the fish make their do their thing fertilizes the plants and I thought that was a very neat show and as part of my asphalt business we're, we're into sustainability or everybody is and I got involved with um, Envision which is a, a rating system for sustainable infrastructure and so we wanted to do a workshop here, and we wanted to have a project to present. And so the first project I thought of was Kunia Country Farms. Right. So as well as the executive director of, uh, I call it Happy, yes. the Hawaii Asphalt Paving Industry. Yeah, Happy's fine. Yeah, it seems like you're a great generator of acronyms. So I love this other one. You're the leader of Teach Hawaii. Yes. When Teach Hawaii stands for the Envision Action Committee of Hawaii. Yes. Which is the program in Hawaii, probably volunteers, right? Like most Correct. other good things generally have to be Correct. here. So you've got passionate people that want to do the right thing. They're getting together to support a good cause. And Envision is the software platform that has been produced by ISI, which right, is uh, the... Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure. Perfect, which is definitely what we need a lot more of in Hawaii. Right, yes. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So basically you were already a member of the Institute? No, well actually through my um, happy work, I'm on the Public <laughs> Information Committee for the Envision. But through locally, I'm a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Right. And so we, we were, had a committee already, but then we partnered with also the American Public Works Association and the American Council of Engineering Companies in Hawaii to form this group to um, promote and, well, mostly to first to educate and then to promote Envision in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, and and so that and that's kind of an interesting thing. And I actually only realized uh, today when I was sort of just thinking what we should talk about, and then I find your your interview with Jay. So not only was he the first ever interview with Jay of this Ag Tech series, which has been kind of discontinued for a little bit, but you know there's so much other good content on Think Tech. Maybe he decided they didn't need it, but J Jason's also earned the first ever commercial award through this Envision tool in America. That's right. So it's a 
first ever Hawaii first project, Hawaii, but also yeah. first ever yes. US commercial yes. award. Private company. Yeah. Yes. So congratulations, and that, <laughs> is, that is awesome. And we have a shot of the uh, the award coming up later, which you can talk about just <laughs> what you do with it and how many people you get to see today. But um, I think that's really that's really cool stuff. So congratulations ah, for that. And thank you. It, it, it's good to see. You know, I think the thing that I find most impressive about your work is that you're. And it's, it's in Jay's talk, and the, all these series are online, which is so good about this program. You can always find the content online, which is, um, I think I'd probably like to talk about the business side of it and how Envision could help other businesses do, do well and do better. Uh, there's a lot of information about aquaponics, so the technology, I think, if you don't know what aquaponics is, just get on ThinkTech Hawaii and search aquaponics, and you're going to find a bunch of different interviews with all the leading farmers across the, the, the state or the, the, the nation of Hawaii, if you want to call it that. And then that's where the you can see really the close alignment with Hawaiian values and traditional food production with fish ponds and the, the loies and the taro and the whole flow of that ecosystem is kind of a microcosm for the aquaponics industry, which is I think it's a beautiful uh, sort of creation that you've taken this now to a commercial level to help feed us. Yeah. <laughs> and that was really the goal when we started it. It was how do we help Hawaii become food independent? with the constraint of two things. One was make sure we're sustainable uh, environmentally and economically. And two, actually try to lower and reduce food prices for the island. Right. And so that just leads you hands over fist right into aquaponics as a grow methodology because it certainly is sustainable. In fact, our farm uses, we call ourselves water neutral. We use no new water from our initial fill. And that's still the case that John mentioned, right? Yeah. So you, you, you've still got you filled it once from the Bureau of Water Supply, and that was the, your initial fill that you, what, pumped in, or you had it tanked in, in trucks, or? No, no, we're, we're, we do have access to Oh, yeah, to so water. we had the map, yeah. sorry, up early on the Kunia, where you guys are. So you're in part of the Kunia Ag Park. We're part of the, well, the, I guess we have two farms. One's in the Ag Park, and one is actually right, so on we, the old, uh, right behind the old a little Monte dot Jones there, store. yeah. So just up. It's right, right yeah. in the bread basket, right halfway up Kunia Road. Um, it's a wonderful area. It's the old Del Monte property. And you did quite a bit of geographical research as well as the financial sort of market research just to work out, you know, just not too much rainfall but just enough because you don't want too much rainfall but you'd ideally like some. Correct. And I think, uh, I guess when you're looking for an aquaponic site, there's a couple things. One, you want to make sure it's a safe environment. Two, you want to make sure that you have access, should you need it, to electricity. Yeah. We've now, and you've saw it, for the viewers out there, you saw it in the background, we are on solar but we still re need electricity and then return it to the grid via our solar. One day maybe we'll have batteries and then we can be purely off grid. Okay, so this is what's called the net energy metered We're system. We're a net energy right? metered so system. So a HECO proof system and that currently covers your entire load. Yeah, we farm size right now. ourselves to basically be excellent. Yeah, net, net neutral. Excellent. Um, our water, the same thing. We filled up 186,000 gallons of water and that was the last time we filled up and basically rainfall will replenish us. And Cunea is fairly dry, as you mentioned, yeah. but it does get rain once a month in the winter, obviously more. Um, and then we have such a large catchment area from our grow beds that we'll refill right away. Uh, we have 10,000 gallons of extra holding capacity uh, to catch any additional rain. Just in case. Um, and then yeah. because we're aquaponics, we don't grow in the soil, so we're yeah. soil neutral. So yeah. those nutrients are there for our keiki. So th this shot we are actually pulled off the website, and I think it was probably a lot of your probably earlier marketing material now, but is, is, are those beds still there? or are they? Those, uh, those beds are still there. Um, when we first started the farm, we started with six grow beds. Uh, and now we're kind of beginning to approach 70. Um, wow. So we've expanded a lot. In terms of size, wow. we're about two and a half acres at the moment. Uh, by the end of this year, we'll probably be a full three acres, and we'll probably add two additional acres for next year. Okay, great. Um, so we continue to grow. That's amazing. And, and have you changed the, what, the design of what the original ones were a lot? Like I noticed later shots, they were higher kind of warehouse. Yeah, I'd say in terms of grow beds, we're on design 8.0. Oh, right. Uh, wow. Each one either trying to reduce our building material footprint, um, so to make the beds either cheaper to build, quicker to build, or stronger in the way that we build them. Or all of the above. Or, or all the, the above is would be ideal. Um, and then we've also moved into salad mixes. Mm -hmm. uh, and salad mix is an interesting thing because rather than use traditional lumber and that type of stuff, we actually recycle Pallets. Right, that, and that leads into the Envision tool pretty nicely because right. that's one of the things I was really impressed with. And 
So both John and I are what's called a lead AP or accredited professional with the United States Green Building Council program where that's kind of like a framework for the built infrastructure. Correct. What's interesting about uh, the Envision tool, it kind of can be applied to any project really. It gives you a whole it, list yeah. of... It's, it's, it's designed for infrastructure projects. Predominantly. So. And so as a civil engineer, it's very exciting because that's what we do. So I'm also, I'm a lead AP, but I'm also what they call Envision SP or Envision Sustainability Professional. Uh -huh. Which means you got the black belt to use this tool, so you yes. <laughs> don't damage yourself or yeah. anyone else. And so, and the, and the pallets was that an idea you had anyway, or was that something? Because this tool kind of gives you credits for. Well, the the neat thing about Envision is it sets up guidelines uh, and ways to think about whether it's large right. infrastructure projects right. or even small private company sustainable farm type projects, um, and really just laid out nicely in terms of points and ways to think about our interaction with the community, our interaction with the environment, our interaction uh, on various social factors, various you know, ecological factors, and eventually economical factors, yeah. and just lays it out. And there are things that we would look in the guidelines and say, it's probably reasonable we should try to address that and do it, and other points that they kind of want you to do, but you're saying there's no economic reason that would justify spending right. that kind of money right. to achieve that result. It's up to you as a business. It's you're going to be discretional on mm -hmm. what, what makes sense, really. Yeah, and, and so it's a great footprint or blueprint, really, to follow, particularly when you're talking about, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, for aquaponics, for food safety, you got to be yeah. environmentally and economically sure. sustainable. Yeah. Otherwise, you could have the prettiest farm in the world. It might produce food, but it goes out of business. Yeah. It doesn't do yeah, you any good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that, and that's the coolest thing. Like, I think, I don't know what it, the stats are for ag businesses, but most other small businesses go to business within two years. It's generally the national sort of average. So and I, I can't imagine ag would be any better than that, especially <laughs> in Hawaii, when we are still competing with, you know, 90%, depending on what statistic you read, mm. of imports. So. Right. Immediately that shows you economically you're kind of up against a, a hard obstacle to, and a nut to crack, yeah. as we'd say. So uh, the fact that you guys have managed to not only keep in business but scale up on the scale that you guys have achieved is really impressive. It's, it's a, you know, it probably, hopefully it's very inspirational for all the aquaponic companies that are thinking about or even other sort of farming businesses both outside and you've got, we've got one in Kakako, the indoor guy, I haven't checked yeah. out. He is going, but it's great mm. to see well, that model. Well, the community has been a tremendous blessing. I mean, yeah. they really are supportive of local farmers. Hopefully every farmer out there that's watching agrees with yeah. that. Uh, the restaurants have been very supportive. Zippies? <laughs> Zippies Zippies is one of our big, uh, I guess, buyers. In fact, Excellent. we supply most yeah. of the uh, greens for their salads. Excellent. So Actually, yeah, well, you're yeah. making me hungry now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we do have a bit of a pow hunter next. So we're going to take a quick break, maybe yeah. grab something to eat for a minute, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likeable about science. Aloha, this is Kirsten Baumgart-Turner. I host Sustainable Hawaii every Tuesday at noon on Think Tech Hawaii, live streamed at thinktechhawaii.com, and we also appear on Olelo. We uh, would love to have you join us for many of the interesting think tech uh, shows that we have uh, dealing with really important issues that impact all of us in Hawaii as well as nationally. On Sustainable Hawaii, I try to bring up the issues that are most pertinent to those of us on all of the islands and also to help connect people. I'll, I'll give people a chance to look at what um, people are doing and see how they can plug in and get active. Hello and welcome back. We are on Think Tech Hawaii's Food and Pharma series. With me today, Jason Brand and John Young. So we're discussing uh, basically aquaponics for food security done in the right way because it's kind of, a lot of people get excited by aquaponics, then they realize it's kind of messy, a lot of hard work, things can go wrong pretty easy, pretty quickly. I know that from first-hand experience. Mm -hmm. um, and well, Jason's heading up co-founder of one of the most successful businesses that we just found out has scaled up nearly tenfold since it started. Uh, so that's, that's awesome to see in Hawaii to set a precedent. And not only did they do that successfully, but they've, they're now really addressing the uh, social, environmental model of how to create a good food business from every aspect. So um, that's kind of what we've been discussing. And we just heard about the, uh, the whole process that they've actually gone through. And they've been able to scale up to the commercial level with Zippies and other 
sort of purchases. And your model still remains pretty similar, that you go to the higher end, big bulk stores rather than sort of mum and pop or farmers markets? That would well, I wouldn't say higher end. Remember, the goal of our farm is to drive food prices lower. True. Uh, it meant yeah. bigger. No bigger. Yeah. So in order to do that, we try to achieve yeah. economies of scale and sell things in large lots. So you'll find our products at large restaurants like Zippy's, in supermarkets like Foodland or Don Quixote or things like that, where it's able, we're able to sell it in large, you know, thousand pound at Quantities, a time. Yeah. 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 Um, that's not to say that the wholesalers don't go ahead and divide it, so eventually it ends up in smaller restaurants because on a price basis, we try to be cheaper than the imported lettuces yeah. so that people on the island are getting fresh food, locally produced, sustainably grown, less money. Yeah. Right, so it's... Well, and, and I think you said that too in Jay's series. It's, I think you said something about it which made me laugh is even though you haven't done the tests, like you taste your own lettuce and then you taste something that's shipped in from California. Like, you know, it's probably looks kind of similar, although I think yours is more vibrant, but the, I'm sure the nutrients are better for you. There's no way it couldn't be, right? That well, I agree with you. I think just, just on taste alone, you know, if you line up and for those that want to have a party trick, get in-ground uh, lettuce, hydroponic lettuce and aquaponic lettuce. And just do blind taste tests. Sounds like a wild party. Let's <laughs> <laughs> come over to your house later on. <laughs> definitely need room for that one. Yeah, yeah. So and also, so, so to get there, like you, we've we've talked about the the process you ended up implementing, which is this the Envision tool, and and so John, you you were just saying actually you you didn't actually do the certification of the tool. Uh, using the tool, that was actually another group that they're Correct. off island right now at a conference Correct. to help talk about this. So maybe if we could talk a bit a little about how that process happened and you know, who was involved in the results. So when we um, when we want to do the workshop and we look for a project, I needed someone to help me with uh, um, doing the award submittal, and so we would reach out to Blue Ocean Civil Consulting because um, Amber, who's uh, one of the principals there, she's really into sustainability, and when she saw the project. She thought, like, wow. So you get paid in food or money or both? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then seriously, when, when, um, then when we showed it to Envision, because we were a little concerned about it being a smaller project, they thought that was a perfect project. Yeah. And so from there, it just took off. Well, and they probably came out to Hawaii to certify, right? Like most well, they came, yeah, they came out to give the award. We have to do a trip every week just <laughs> yes. to make sure this is legitimate. Yeah, and so that, basically she does kind of would be like an audit, really, where she'll come out, do the parts of the criteria, cool. She, she helped yeah. us, so she really was working on behalf of the farm to really help gather the data, right. um, put everything in presentable format, and then guide us through the Envision process. Excellent. So she was our right-hand person, yeah. in fact, more important than the right hand, she was the leader uh, to help farmers really access the Envision guidelines. Right, and as a farmer, you know, you're busy running your business, right? This is now suddenly above and beyond of what you normally do. And she's like, well, I need this document to justify, you know, whatever. The, how many pallets have you collected over the last two years? And, and that's what it is, is a lot of the thought, at least for our farm, that goes behind the Envision Award, we had thought about, you yeah. know, and we had gone through a lot of the process. It's, did we document it? Yeah, quantifying it. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And, and so a lot of the work and effort we had to do was figure out, you know, how many pallets have we actually recycled? You know, how many tons of broken asphalt have we mm -hmm. brought in to line our roads? Because that's what we use. Uh, so that we can drive trucks and whatnot, you know, around the farm. Yeah. Um, so how do you quantify all this stuff, add it up, and actually see your environmental footprint, whether it's positive or negative? Right, and that's where you need an engineer. And then, of course, having engineers on hand, they help make things a little better for the yeah. farm. Yeah, right? well, an yeah. analytical by personality, generally. Yeah. yeah. So, and is is there plans that you know of to do another kind of envision project? Is that already somewhere well, in the pipeline, or that what, be? What we're hoping we had that workshop on August 29th, mm -hmm. and it got the engineering community excited. It's typically a kind of a civil engineering thing to do. Right. And so I know some of the firms are looking at their clients' projects and seeing if they can apply the system to that. We we, we um, reach out to Ulupono to see if they'd be interested. And they're, they are very interested in, the, in this. And uh, we hope to have a training workshop so that more people can become envisioned sustainability professionals. That'd be good. And that'd be kind of a one or two day thing, you think? Uh, it's or? a one day thing. One day thing, yeah. Yeah, probably in the end of February. Okay, cool. Yeah, and even for us, we are now on our second field trip of young engineers oh, yeah. throughout Hawaii coming to visit oh, yeah. the farm the and really think about, you know, one, the Envision Award, but two, how do our principles fit into yeah. some of the structures that they'll be giving really? to build? Yeah. Yeah. Is this from UH or? No, from it was ASC, YMF. Yeah. So the younger so members. 
We've got the website. So they might be members of, of the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure. Maybe that could be how they're finding it. Um, that's the logo that you know, we got there on there is the, your gold, gold award. Yes. So, um, that, yeah, that, there we go. That's the award that's in proudly at your house. That's, I believe, suggest. No, no, that's, that's on our... Uh, on the wall. Our, on our deck. As you mentioned in the beginning, we don't let anything go to waste. So we have a giant teaching classroom that we allow school children to come to and learn where their food is coming from, or at least aquaponics is a farming method. And that's the deck that in this picture it looks like we're sitting on. Oh, okay, and great. And so the award will be displayed there. It's very And then next to it, you see the solar panels. But underneath both of these structures is just fish tanks. Right. It's thousands and thousands that's of right. gallons of fish. Yeah, which are the nutrients for the, the, the lettuce we, we saw earlier. Yeah. yeah. And I guess I'd like to have a bit of a segue about, about that solar. So when I was out there last time, that wasn't constructed yet. So that's a pretty impressive array. And I believe you got that through a Department of Agriculture grant in part. Is that yep. correct? Yep. So we so received a 25% grant from the uh, Department of Ag um, to, I guess, subsidize or help get yep. us started yep. with regard to this project to take us energy neutral. Right, exactly. Because otherwise, your only option as a small farmer is you're paying HECO or the utility <laughs> if you're on other islands each and every month. And that's going to eat away at the profit margins, oh. which will eventually is going to stop you from staying in business. So this array is, is really impressive to, to see implemented. And you know, obviously, I love solar energy, so yeah. I'm a, a big fan of seeing this happen. Um, but that huge plug to Department of Agriculture. And the, you know, I've seen Liz, uh, and she did the aquaponics programs I went through myself to learn sort of the aquaponics and why I didn't want to become a farmer myself. So <laughs> I appreciate you did it. But um, the, the, the Department of Agriculture, and especially Liz, puts in a lot of work to support farmers, which is, is great to see and, you know, super needed, I think, in Hawaii. So, you know, we couldn't have too many people sit around the table, but, you know, big shout out to Liz and the, all the great work she does for the Department of Ag and, yeah. and farmers in particular. So th this is kind of the, the shot that we saw earlier, but looking down with the sunscreens closed, I, I guess, to protect the lettuce from the sun? Or? Yeah, so this would be uh, probably peak summer, so you're in June, July type time frame. Uh, and we're preventing tip burn for the lettuce. Mm -hmm. And so we'll put them in, depending on really how intense the sun is, between a 30 and 50% shade cloth. Um, and then in the cooler months, remove it, um, just because it's not necessary. And what's your um, sort of next steps, do you think? You've, you're kind of you're scaling up. Is there a point when you're going to say, oh, that's enough beds? Or are you getting new products? Or are you still finding there's just more demand that you have to scale up yeah, for? Yeah, well, I mean, as a farmer, we're in a blessing state, meaning right now we are, you know, whatever, if we can grow it, we can sell it. There's right. that much demand for local yep. produce right now. And you're not really affecting other local farmers because we import so much food. Right. And so even if we doubled our production, maybe we knock out you know, a, a tiny bit of the caseload mm. that's being imported to yeah. the state, but we don't jeopardize any local farmers. So there's yep. room for everyone yep. to grow. Yep. Where we've been focusing is growing both in head lettuce because, again, there's a lot of demand for it, and really increasing our salad mixes. Okay, and that's kind of what you're talking about. That's the newer end that you've kind of just got into was the, the salad mixes, which you'd see probably more in restaurants than in supermarkets, and that's this shot here, right? Yeah, that's here's the salad mix. Great see, mix this, this one in particular is a beautiful spring mix. Um, full of reds and greens. There's actually eight different lettuce types in that salad mix. Wow. And you can see they're under hard roof greenhouse structures. Um, and that's a new thing for us. Again, it was important to get it up before November to February, which would be the rainy right. season mm -hmm. for us. And so we're trying to pr protect it. Unlike head lettuce and most in-ground vegetables, rain really does affect salad mix. Yeah. Because any fragile, drop right? will uproot it or, or make them stick together and then they'll get molded. Interesting. Die. So, you know, it's, we learned that the hard way. Too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you say that figure about doubling your, your production, if you double, because, you know, as you're very well aware, Governor Ige now has pronounced that our new goal is doubling, doubling our local food production by 2030. Yeah. So we've got the Aloha Plus Challenge that, you know, we're trying to implement and get going. And so we probably need countless of these farms to hit that goal. Yeah. So Across all different types of commodities. Right, and across all islands too. Yeah. So the, yeah, I think the the opportunity and the prospects for people that really want to do this and engage are huge and very needed. Yeah. And, and in my mind, critical, which is why this series exists. Yeah. So yeah, so no, I, I think I really appreciate the work you're doing, and hopefully, you know, all these young guys that are coming out to tour to see how to do this can yeah. take sort of the books. And I, I know you're a very giving and sharing person with your time and your knowledge. So. Yeah, you know, as long as they're not gonna like come come rip you off eventually. I look forward to the t the time when you're like, oh, this young guy has just you know <laughs> taking away all our business because then we we kind of have have, have succeeded there, right? <laughs> 
Uh, I think that would be, as you say, all of us can grow for acres and acres before we're at a point where we actually compete right. versus each other. But that also means, as you point out, we will be food independent. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a good thing for the island. Right, and then we can get into the more interesting crops if you really have to specialize into really, really bizarre stuff. <laughs> and I guess that, you know, that might be a good segue. Hopefully we do get at that point and the aquaponic farmers have to sort of strategize amongst themselves as to what do they grow strategically for the market that we have. Yeah. rather than just you know growing whatever is cool so it's where i sort of look forward to so um we got to wrap it up in about a minute so uh any kind of final words on what you'd like to leave with the, with the viewers for today um well first uh, just to reiterate thanks for having us on and for yeah. all the viewers Thank thanks you. for watching and be part of the farming community because you know hawaii basically needs this i think becoming food independent as an island state and nation is important for us all who live here and all the people who visit here so Thank you, and uh, if you guys do want to visit our website, kuniacountryfarms.com, uh, our neighboring uh, property, it happens to be a rum distillery, which grows a lot of sugar cane, kohanarum.com, and so it's a quite a fun tour. Yeah, I was going to do that for the main, the main thing, but it's not really so much as food, so. Yeah, drink. Uh, and, and we probably have to have product sample sampling as well, so. <laughs> and how about you, John? I just want to mention that the Envision is about our award, but it's more about how to think about projects in a sustainable way. Right. So we want people to start thinking about projects in a sustainable way. Yeah. And that's the message. Yes, that's the message we're trying to deliver. Yeah. And they are, what what more impl important place in Hawaii really to, to to do that where we basically have to have most things shipped in. Yeah. And if we don't look at reuse, like the creative pallet reuse that you've done and the gravel and other stuff, then that's like yeah, we're paying for it and we're shipping it in at big carbon and cost expense. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think I I'd, li I'd like to wrap it up. That I I think it's still very inspirational to especially younger people and maybe you know even older people that want to find a more meaningful career is i don't think there's anything more meaningful and fulfilling than growing food for yourselves for your community and for other people for sale and i, I think uh everyone that's met the farming community as opposed to say the business community nothing against them but business is about making money farming is about growing food so i think i my personal findings have been that the farmers are much more well well rooted and just more compassionate nicer people they're more fun <laughs> to be around like yeah and it's still a business which i think why it's blending the best of both worlds it's, it's still a business you have to be yeah. sustainable in all ways rather than strictly money business you could just have to be financially sustainable and that to me is the big sort of disjunct where we've got the, the developers here which we touched on the, the hoa pili project which i'm kind of against <laughs> so yeah a lot of hope for the future, I believe. So thanks again, guys. Thanks. Thanks.